Hello world! Today I've got for you the answers to my top five sunscreen questions. Hey everybody, Shelly here and today I'm going to take you through the top five questions that I had about sunscreen and the answers that I came up with. Um, if you haven't seen my first sunscreen video, I get into some of the more nitty gritty details like what is SPF, what is UVA, what is UVB, what are the ingredients in different kinds of sunscreen. And we'll touch a little bit on some of that today, um, but primarily I wanna answer some of the questions about actually wearing sunscreen. Did you ever stop and think like, how did this racket get, get so complicated? Um, it is complicated, but it's not that complicated. So um, I'll break it down as easily as possible. And hopefully you will have fewer questions about sunscreen when we're done with this. Um, so question number one, how much sunscreen should I apply? Now, if we're talking about a full body application top to bottom on all of your exposed skin, like if you're wearing a bathing suit kind of thing, um, the recommended amount of sunscreen to apply is a shot glass, a full, you know, is that one ounce? A full shot of sunscreen. Now, if you're just talking about your face and neck, um, like when you're doing your skincare and your cosmetics and things, um, typically you're shooting for a quarter teaspoon each. So a total of a half teaspoon, quarter on your face, quarter on your neck. It's gonna seem like a lot of sunscreen and this is one of the reasons why if you are relying on say a tinted moisturizer or your foundation which has some SPF sunscreen in it, you're probably not getting the full effect of that SPF because you're likely not applying that much of the product to your face. So there's a fuzzy floating through the air. There's cat hair everywhere. I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by animals, animals. So if you are wearing a foundation, for example, that has SPF in it, you're probably not putting on enough sunscreen to get the full benefit of the SPF that is advertised. Um, so if we're thinking quarter teaspoon on your face, quarter teaspoon on your neck, um, that's about the size, if you were to measure it out in your palm, about the size of a, a blob of a quarter. So about a quarter size on your face, a quarter size on your neck, it's gonna feel like a lot of sunscreen, which is why you should probably apply a dedicated sunscreen to your face before you apply a foundation or a, a, a makeup cosmetic product that has uh, SPF in it because you can apply a straight up sunscreen more liberally than you can, say, a foundation. So, all right, we're gonna use sunscreen and we're gonna use foundation, so question number two when should I apply my sunscreen in my daily skincare routine? You will find, if you Google around, some disagreement on this, but when I looked at the sources of who was saying what, the most reputable sources go with this. So this is my answer to this question, and it, it's just the collection that I came up with of sources, and I thought the most reputable ones put it this way. Um, your sunscreen should go last in your skincare routine before your makeup. So if you think about the order that you're putting everything on, first you would wash your face, cleanse, use a toner if you do that. Um, then you would apply any treatment or serum products that you're going to apply. Then you would apply moisturizer, then your sunscreen, then your foundation and your cosmetics and your makeup and things. Um, you will find people saying one thing or the other. You're also gonna find people that say, well, chemical sunscreen has to go on your bare skin or otherwise it doesn't work. Um, mineral sunscreens can go on elsewhere. And I'm gonna tell you the difference between those two, but honestly, from all of the things I read, I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, I'm going to side with the, um, the research that goes along the lines of sunscreen goes last before your cosmetic products. Um, if you think about putting your moisturizer on, say, after your sunscreen, you're basically diluting your sunscreen. You're diluting it. Um, now, putting foundation on after your sunscreen is going to dilute it a little bit, so you are still diluting it, um, but 
Um, there are a few things that you can do to help prevent the dilution or dilute as minimally as possible. The first thing would be when you put your sunscreen on, wait three to five minutes before you apply your foundation. So that way the sunscreen has some time to set into your skin. Um, second, apply your foundation gently and without rubbing. So that means if you like to apply your foundation just with your hands and rubbing it into your face, um, probably not a good idea on top of sunscreen because you're going to be moving that sunscreen around and potentially removing it. Um, but if you use a stippling brush or a beauty blender where you're tap, tap, tap or bounce, bounce, bouncing it on your face, if you do it gently, um, you're going to have less of an impact on the sunscreen that's been applied. Um, lastly, you could set your foundation with an SPF powder to hopefully give back a little of the protection um, that you might have um, lost by applying your foundation over the sunscreen. Um, but you definitely don't want to rely exclusively on a foundation product that has sunscreen in it or a tinted moisturizer with sunscreen. Um, chances are you're not going to be applying those liberally enough to get the full benefit of the sunscreen. So what about this chemical sunscreen versus physical sunscreen? Uh, what are they? What's the difference? Which one is better? Um, you're going to find arguments on both sides of the fence again on this. Um, sometimes it's a personal preference. Um, I prefer mineral-based sunscreens, but here's the difference. So chemical sunscreens, um, they are made with um, organic chemicals that uh, they basically take the sun's rays that come into your body or onto your skin, onto your body. They absorb those rays and then kick the heat back out so that they don't reach your skin. So there's a chemical reaction going on that is absorbing the sun's rays before they get through, before they penetrate your skin and then uh, dissipating them as heat. Now, be aware, mineral, chemical, doesn't matter. None of them will absorb 100% of the sun's rays. You, you can't protect yourself completely, but um, the chemical sunscreens do it that way. Now, when you're looking at the ingredients, if you're trying to figure out what kind of sunscreen you've got, uh, here are the six most common ingredients that are used in the chemical kind of sunscreen. Um, oxybenzone, avobenzone, octisalate, it's like chemistry class all over again, right? octocrylene, homosalate, and octinoxate. You got that? There's going to be a quiz later. It's totally not going to be a quiz later. Um, so those chemicals, if you see those in the list of ingredients for your sunscreen, you've got yourself a chemical sunscreen. Um, one of the downsides of chemical sunscreens, the higher the SPF, the more likely your sunscreen is to be imbalanced in the chemicals that prevent you from getting UVA versus UV, UVB rays. Um, and when you lose that balance, you're going to be exposing yourself to higher risk of photoaging. So the, the sun's rays that cause your wrinkles and your dark spots and your hyperpigmentation and the breakdown of collagen. Um, also, those chemicals in higher concentrations are much more harsh. In some studies, they've been shown to have um, impacts on um, hormonal balance, uh, low birth weight in children, things like that. Um, so if you go high SPF on a chemical sunscreen, that would be like over 50. Um, you're more likely to have allergic reactions, irritation, those kinds of things, negative impacts. So you really don't want to go super high SPF on a chemical sunscreen. There's another thing um, with the chemical sunscreens, and that is a, an issue with the combination of the chemicals that they're using. So the two that you don't want to see combined either in a single product or if you're using two different sunscreen products like a sunscreen and then a foundation and they've one has one of these chemicals, the other has the other, you don't want to combine these two. And that would be the avobenzone, which is the lowest hazard chemical of all the chemical sunscreens. So that's a good one to have in your sunscreen, but you don't want to combine it or use a product that has both of these, avobenzone and octin whoopsie octinox 8 why do i have such trouble with x's um, so the combo you don't want avobenzone and octinoxate you don't want those two together whether they're both in the same product or you're using two different products that have spf and one has one the other has the other 
don't combine them because what happens is um, you get a breakdown. It makes uh, the O one, the octanoxate. Um, it's not a very stable ingredient to begin with, and it gets more unstable when those two chemicals are combined. Um, so that is your chemical sunscreen. The other kind, it, you'll see it referred to as mineral sunscreen or physical sunscreen. Uh, so these are sunscreens that are using uh, active ingredients like zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. Um, they're minerals that they work by reflecting the sun's rays that come down to your skin. They reflect them back like a mirror. Um, so that's what prevents them from reaching your skin. And again, just like the chemical sunscreens, no mineral sunscreen is going to prevent 100% of the rays from getting to your skin. But um, depending on the SPF, that is the factor by which um, you will have protection from the sun's rays. Um, in the past, people didn't like mineral sunscreens, especially for face products, because they left sort of a whitish cast. Um, but today the technology, the, the nanoparticles, the microparticles, the tiny, tiny little, they've got it broken down so well that um, you don't really have that problem anymore. My absolute favorite facial sunscreen is the Exuviance um, Sheer Daily Protector, which is a mineral sunscreen. Um, and it's wonderful. And there is no whitish anything. It's, it's a wonderful product. Um, so both are options. Any sunscreen is better than no sunscreen. All right, so my cats are climbing in a box right now. Um, I can't tell which one's causing trouble right now, uh, but they're totally in a box. In a box, making noise. Siva, what are you doing? Next up, so what happens if you combine multiple products that contain sunscreens potentially multiple products that contain uh, one mineral and one chemical sunscreen or products that have different SPFs uh, in your layering process of your skincare. What if, what if you combine them? What happens? So a few things happen. First off, SPF. So let's say you've got yourself an SPF 30 sunscreen and you apply that. And then on top of that, you're putting your SPF 15 foundation. Are you going to have the net result of an SPF 45? Sadly, no. The SPF is not additive. It does not combine. What you will get, assuming that you have applied both products properly, and again, like I said, a lot of times, especially with things like foundation, you're not going to apply enough to get the full stated SPF on that label. But let's assume that you did. You applied it liberally. You've got a ton of product on your face. Um, if you had a 30 SPF um, sunscreen and a 15 SPF foundation, you are going to get the level of protection from the higher SPF. So you're going to have SPF 30 protection. Applying them properly means you applied the right amount of sunscreen. It also means you let the first sunscreen set into your skin for three to five minutes before you applied the next product, your foundation or whatever. So assuming that you've applied properly, you're not going to get an additive effect, but you're also not going to get a diluted effect with your sunscreen. Um, so generally you're gonna get the protection of whichever one is higher. Um, the next question you might have is about, well, mineral versus chemical sunscreen. Can I wear them both at the same time? Will they react with each other? Now, depending what ingredients are in the product itself, and this has really nothing to do with the sunscreen chemicals, but the product itself, some won't wear well with others. Like some of the products that contain sunscreen are oil-based, some are water-based, and you know, oil and water aren't necessarily going to work very well together. Um, so, but beyond that, if we're just talking about the sunscreen and you do have two products that, that work well together, um, there's nothing wrong with combining a chemical sunscreen product and a mineral sun sunscreen product. So let's say you're putting on a 30 SPF and it's a mineral sunscreen and you put that on after you have washed and moisturized, then you let that set and you're going to now apply a foundation that has a chemical sunscreen SPF 15. Um, the SPF rules still apply. You're gonna get the benefit of the higher SPF product assuming you applied it properly. Um, and the lower SPF product is not going to dilute or inhibit the other one from working. 
Some people actually recommend using a combination of both the chemical and the mineral sunscreens because the, the thought process being that if you've got your mineral sunscreen and that's reflecting the sun's rays and that's the second product you've put on top, um, you've reflected some rays and then the rays that make it through can then get absorbed and dissipated as heat by your chemical sunscreen. Um, so there are people who do believe it's a good idea to wear them both. Um, you're actually now finding some products on the market that have both. Um, the Elta MD UV Clear Broad Spectrum SPF 46 is a sunscreen that is has um, both chemical and uh, mineral sunscreen ingredients in it. It's got the zinc oxide with oxinate. Um, so it is a single product that has both. So that's an option. It's not a bad thing. Um, I don't strive to do it exclusively combining them both, but uh, I don't mind if it happens. Question number five, last one. And this, this has bugged me forever. So you always hear that your car windows, for example, have um, some UV protection so that you, know, you don't get sunburned when you're driving in the car and you've got sun coming through the closed windows. Um, so why, after all these years, do I have dark spots? I've, I've, most of my life I've been the driver, I haven't been the passenger. So this is the side of my face that's exposed to the sun. So even though I don't get sunburn while I'm driving, why the heck do I have so much sun damage? I wasn't wearing sunscreen religiously throughout my 20s and 30s, which was shame on me. Um, about, about the age 35, I started worrying about it. Um, but you would think that that glass would protect me. Now, here's the deal. So unless you have specially UV shielding glass in your car or your home, like if you're at work and you have an office window and you sit next to it and the sun comes in and you get sun on you during the day, um, unless it is specifically UV shielding glass, um, your windows are generally only going to block the UVB rays. Now UVA versus UVB, UVA are the ones that cause the photo aging and the wrinkles. UVB are the rays that cause cancer and sunburn. So most glass windows in your car, in your house, they will naturally block UVB even if they're not shielding, you know, not specifically UV shielding glass. Um, so you're not going to get sunburn in the car typically through the window, through the glass window, but you are still getting all of the UVA rays that cause the photo aging, the dark spots, the hyperpigmentation, the wrinkles, the damage to the collagen in your skin. You're still getting all of that. If you're not wearing sunscreen, the glass is not going to protect you unless it is specifically UV shielding glass. So that is why even though all the years of driving in my car, I did not get sunburned driving in the car, but I have some lovely sunspots to show for all of my time of not wearing sunscreen. Um, so that is the reason why your typical windows are going to block the UVB rays, which cause the sunburns and the cancer, but they're not blocking the UVA rays that cause photo aging and wrinkles and hyperpigmentation and all that bummer of stuff that makes our skin look older. Womp womp. So there you go, top five FAQs about sunscreen. I hope you found this helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you have not already. I thank you for coming by and watching. Go out there, have yourselves a great day, and don't forget to be awesome. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.